As of version 4.5, the Monoprice Mini Delta is finally on the list of selectable printers in Cura. You're welcome. However, newcomers are still getting tripped up here and there, so I made this video to help people get started out with installing Cura 4.5, importing Brian's profiles, and doing some minor tweaks to your start G-code. As always, the short text version and timestamp bookmarks are all in the video description. So, first off, this is pretty much a supplement to the startup guide, Brian's Monoprice Mini Delta 101, which I've sort of been keeping updated here recently but it's still mostly his document. You should definitely read this. This document's consolidated down to like the essential knowledge that you need for running this printer and keeping it maintained. It doesn't go too deep into complicated stuff. That's what my document does that comes after this. The calibration roadmaps all the complicated stuff. MPMD 101's the essential knowledge, and you should definitely... Print your first Lucky Cat just to make sure that the printer works. And if it doesn't, then you should probably return your printer. Or if that's not an option, I guess you can go to this page, go towards the bottom, and there's a basic troubleshooting section that has some basic things you can look at. And since I've mentioned that, I'm going to start out doing a full uninstall because a few people have reported Cura crashing after installing. So I'm just going to do that really quick. So if you open up your taskbar and do add or remove programs, I just typed in add or remove it auto completed and open this up and let's see if I can find Ultimaker Cura on this list. Here we are. Click it, uninstall. Yes, preparing to remove. I think it finally finished, but that's not everything you need to do. Now you need to go delete some files. So if you open up your file manager, this PC, C, users, go to your users folder. And what you need to do is click on view and hidden items. And so users, now we're going to find app data. And now we're going to click on roaming and we're going to find Cura and delete this folder. So right click, delete. Now let's go up back up to app data, local, and also delete it here, Cura, delete. And if you have other users on this machine that have used Cura, also go and do it there. Roaming, Cura, delete. And notice that I'm in like the user's name, David. I'm, I'm not in public or something like that. And also local, delete. There, that's a full uninstall. So now what you want to do is you want to go to Ultimaker's website, which I'll link in the description. And right now it has a link for downloading Cura 4.4.1 on this button. But if you look down here, there's a Cura 4.5 beta. I typically don't recommend downloading the beta versions of Cura or even a 4.x.0 because there's usually some kind of problem. But I want to get out ahead of this video and go ahead and make something before someone else and comes along and tells you to do the wrong thing. So I'm going to click on download this and it takes me to this page. And if I scroll down, since I'm on Windows, I'm going to download this 4.5.0 Win64 Beta.MSI. All right, and that's downloading. And while this is downloading, I'm going to go and download something else as well. I'm going to go to the Monoprice Mini Delta Wiki to the Cura page on it. And it has this section for profiles, and I'm going to download Brian's profiles from here, which I'll also provide an alternate link directly to his Google Drive folder in the, in the video description.
Let's click on Ultimaker Cura and open Cura. All right, so here we are. Let's click Get Started. Agree. Next. Next. At a non-networked printer, let's collapse this or scroll down to until we find Monoprice. Here's Monoprice. Expand it. Let's click MP Mini Delta. Next and finish and here we are it's loaded in some of you may be tempted to print right away but uh one thing that's wrong at least in the beta version if you check the material settings your build point temperature is set to 60 degrees by default that's probably not going to happen and your printer is just going to sit there and wait forever to reach this temperature that it's never going to reach and then it's never going to print so you probably want to change that to 40 or so or better yet Use profiles designed for this printer. So if you go to Preferences and Configure Cura, and click Profiles. And what we're going to want to do is import it, but I, I downloaded these profiles earlier. Let's show them in folder. Let's just right click this download and extract all right there. And you see here in this folder, he has a new install and update only. The new install is referring to older versions of Cura, like 3.6 3 through 4.4.1. You had to copy a bunch of files to install the printer on Cura. You don't have to do that anymore. So we're going to go directly to the update only folder and grab the profiles. So back in Cura, we're going to click import. I'm going to navigate to that folder I just showed you, update only, click on the first one, open, successfully imported profile MPMD best, and now let's do that for the rest of them, import, okay, and we've imported these profiles, but a lot of these profiles are based around the magic numbers or optimal layer heights. A few people might kind of scoff at that idea for a Delta printer because we're not using lead screws and all three towers are moving constantly to move the effector around. But the vertical Z axis is still pretty consistent. So if you can align your layer heights with full and half motor steps, you, it's going to make a difference. So... Now that we've imported these profiles, let's go into our printer settings and make sure MP Mini Delta is selected, click machine settings. And let's expand this because it can be hard to see everything and start G code. Uh, if you came from the other one, the old G code from Monoprice Mini Delta used to include a bunch of configuration values up here. That caused some problems for some people, so we've kind of decided that if you want to add configuration values to your start G-code, you need to make a conscious decision of what you're doing. And so instead, I put this link to the calibration page into the start G-code, and we're just going to open that page up and, and see what we want to do. And what we're going to focus on here is correcting these M92 XYZ values. And so scroll in, scroll in, you know, if you have one eighth micro stepping drivers, you need to use this line. If you have one sixteenth micro stepping drivers, use this line. Sometimes you can tell what it is based on firmware version. Sometimes you can't. And I write a whole big note about version 45 and about how how these values are really based on the main board and not the firmware version and there's nothing stopping anyone from flashing the wrong firmware version but you know it, you're probably safe if you're on version 41 through 44 and you check the firmware version just by whenever you turn the printer on 
that's the number that pops up right here where it says motion controller version. And so one of these values will be right. If you're not sure, try this value, try the 1 8 micro stepping drivers value first. And if that doesn't work, then try the 1 16th micro stepping drivers. That's part of the reason you need to print the lucky cap before, because if the lucky cap works at first, you know your printer's fine and it's working well, but if you choose the wrong value here and suddenly the lucky cat won't print anymore, you know what you're doing. So for my printer, I have version 44 and the 1 16th micro stepping driver. So I'm going to select these values. I'm going to copy it. And in the start G code, you see all these semicolons. These semicolons represent a comment. Basically, G code is going to read everything line by line and execute whatever command you put here until it gets to a semicolon. A semicolon is a comment. Everything after it is ignored. Then it goes to the next one and starts over again. So comment, comment, then the next one. It has a G90 code and then a comment. So I say here if you want to put calibration values in your start G code, put them here. So I'm going to backspace out that semicolon and some people might say oh why are you putting these in start g code instead of just saving them over eeprom if you have to watch this video you're probably a newbie and you need help so we're going to do it this way and also m665r has a bug in stock firmware where it doesn't get saved correctly so there i just copied the correct m92 value now let's scroll down a little more and I talk about these two different values for M665 depending on dimensional accuracy. If you care about that, watch my other video. For now, we're just going to copy these stock values with the adjusted segments per second. Basically, segments per second helps things process better on your printer. You see this, these nasty zits on this Reddit post. That's because they didn't have the segments per second set correctly the stock printer doesn't and sometimes will cause you issues with some models so just go ahead and do it so back here i'm just going to copy these stock values go back in my start g code i've got an extra line here and i'm going to go ahead and control v to paste them in there so it looks like i can't right click copy inside here but the keyboard shortcuts in window is in Windows is Control V to cop to paste stuff. And if you uh, decide to keep reading through this tutorial, there's other stuff you can do to improve your print quality as far as extruder calibration and flow rate. And I also mention some PID values, and I explained it a bit here, but I really don't want people blindly copying and pasting this because it's really caused Mickey a lot of headache when people just blindly leave this stuff, the, these PID values in their start G code, and then they switch to Marlin and they start crying about why is their printer resetting, and it's it's a whole annoying thing. So, you know, read this stuff and make the decision for yourself what you're going to do. And so there we go. And before we leave the start G code, one thing I want to mention is this G29 line. Right now I've got it set to something pretty basic, a G29 P2. That should work okay for most stock machines. You know, but every machine's a little bit different, so you might want to play around with this P value, and it's also mentioned on this calibration page. And then the Z value is your Z offset, which moves how high the nozzle starts off across the whole plate. If you want to move the nozzle up higher, move this number higher. If you want to move it down lower, move it lower, probably in increments of about 0 0.02. It's just something to keep in mind, but 0 0.28 works well for a lot of people. So now, We've closed that and we're back in here. So let's choose one of our MPMD profiles just so I can demonstrate something. And I'm going to discard that setting. So I'm here. Now what I want to do is I want to go to Settings, Configure Settings Visibility, and I want to check Initial Layer Height. I also want Initial Layer Speed. 
I want to be able to see that. And I want I want to look at my different flow rates too because even though I'm not covering flow rate calibration in this video, you, you, you probably eventually want to mess with that if you really want to increase your print quality. I go over it in detail in another video. But for now, we're just worried about initial layer flow. So just kind of a trick that most people use on other 3D printers to help with their first layer is you can raise this initial layer height to help compensate for poor bed leveling. Since I have a stock nozzle 0.4 millimeters, I'm going to change this to 0.28 so that it winds up with an optimal layer height and so it's larger. And initial layer flow is already at 105%, so I'm going to leave that where it is. And then if I go to speed, initial layer speed is 12.5. That's pretty good. I'm going to drop it all the way down to 5 millimeters per second. And you know, some people, instead of cranking up initial layer height, they'll crank up initial layer flow instead. The important rule of thumb here is you don't want your initial layer height greater than about 75 75 percent of your nozzle diameter because you don't want to create clogs and so there i've done that uh, and i mentioned build plate temperature earlier is a gotcha because the print's not going to start until it reaches the target build plate temperature so if you're having problems with that then you should probably lower this and then also you know, printing temperatures at 190 and I found that works pretty good for some filament but for others you might have to crank this up or else your prints are going to look like a under extruded clogged mess so you know I, I talk about calibrating temperature in another video but basically you've got to find the sweet spot uh, between keeping the filament flowing and not having too much stringing so with all that, I'm going to go ahead and just import a file. So file, so file, open files, files, universal filament filter. So I'm looking at this here and one more setting I forgot to mention is look at your support and make sure that your support placement you know, touching build plate's good if you can get away with it, but if you have overhangs that are not practical, like you're trying to print a part in midair, that's going to cause you trouble. So you might need to select build plate adhesion to everywhere. But actually with this part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it so that it's sitting flat like this. And with as small of a layer height as I have on the MPMD minis profile, bet I can get away without using any supports so I'm going to uncheck it for this one but that might cause you trouble with others I'm just going to slice it and you always want a quick preview mode and make sure that it looks practical you can move this little preview slider up and down over here on the right and yeah, it looks like the printer can print that. So you can save it to a removable drive and eject it and stick it into your printer and print it. And spoiler alert, it worked pretty well. It's not a beautiful print, but it worked good enough. I'm going to use that this filter in a future video to demonstrate something. Um, and... That's about it. I hope this video helped you get started with your Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer.